okay, don't be afraid, I'm not going to sing today. Okay, we are talk going to talk about marketing gamification today. I'll start with a short video, just to get you in the mood, some good cases. Maybe. Yeah. Co-op's app enables them to keep in touch with their audience through the use of gamification. In December 2018, 95,000 people downloaded the Co-op app. That same month, 700,000 people played a game on the app three and a half million times. Through 2018, a game was played on the app 10 million times, and 1 million samples were picked up in stores. In June 2019, Denmark held national elections when McDonald's decided to have their very own burger election. Their timing paid off. The burger election was played by 120,000 Danes who voted over 500,000 times within 30 days. Within two hours, McDonald's Denmark received over 30,000 interactions. Zizi launched a swimwear collection and ran a gamification campaign to boost loyalty and attract new Club Zizi members. The campaign resulted in 77,000 registrations, over 7,700 new Club Zizi members at an average conversion rate of almost 80%. In only one month, this scratch card campaign resulted in 3.1 million kroners in revenue for Zizi. Okay. So that's marketing gamification. Few campaign examples, pretty impressive numbers, right? Uh, why does gamification work? Shortly about the psychology behind it. We all like to play, right? Is there somebody in the audience who have never played anything? No hands. Right. So uh, playing is hardwired in our brain. We like to compete, we like to play. It releases dopamine, which is a feel-good hormone. And when dopamine is released, you learn better, you remember better. So that is also one reason to use gamification. It, uh, the connection with your audience is much deeper, and it will be remembered much better. Gamification is a buzzword at the moment. It's coming from everywhere. Uh, I think in the last presentation, games were trending uh, as one, one highlight. So. People are talking about it, but we are actually talking about really, really uh, lizard brain stuff. That's why we really like to play. Uh, the market is growing rapidly, so uh, the business around marketing gamification is estimated to be 9 billion pounds by 2020. Okay, let's go a bit deeper to the psychology. I'm not going to go through the whole uh, chart, but there is a few things remember, we are in this field, we have uh, four hormones as player and six different personality types. So the hormones are dopamine, endorphine, oxytocin, and serotonin. And these are the hormones that are, start flowing when we play different kind of games. Then there is six kind of personas. We all fall into one of these types. Many of us falls into many of these types. But basically, if you think about your own audience when doing marketing, you have these six types of personalities in your audience. So in best case, you will build a campaign for each one of them. But of course, you can start with one. So when uh, the personas are players, achievers, free spirits, disruptors, philanthropists, and socializers. So uh, they are all driven by uh, different kind of drivers. Players are driven by reward. Achievers by mastery. Free spirits are driven by autonomy. Disruptor is driven by change. Philanthropist is driven by purpose. And socializer is driven by relatedness. Okay, uh, for example, when an uh, achiever completes a game, gets the reward, gets everything right, the dopamine is released in their brains, they feel good, they want to play more. Basically, it is simple as that. So this, this is what we utilize when we use game, gamification in marketing. Okay, a uh, few words about the purchase journey. Uh, we use gamification in each step of the purchase journey. Of course, it depends on your business. 
If it's a FMCG business, this journey is gone through in three seconds. If you are selling houses, it can take six months. But uh, typically, companies or our clients, they uh, gamify one part of the purchase journey. They want to collect leads. They uh, want to create more engagement with their audience. They want to get, uh, drive traffic to uh, e-commerce or whatever. But when you are actually uh, creating a state-of-art gamification strategy, you should gamify the whole purchase journey to acquire a customer and to boost loyalty. Today's case about Coop tells us a little bit more about how to boost loyalty, how to increase the uh, amount of visits, the, the size of basket in shops, and you're going to see how uh, much people can be driven into the stores with really, really simple prices, like a pack of cookies. Okay, so here is uh, Case Coop. And uh, the overall concept for Coop is uh, they wanted to increase the amount of app users. They had around 700,000 app users. By, uh, during 2018, they increased the number to 1.1 million. And the concept, the umbrella concept, was uh, advertise offline and online with the message download app, play, and win. Right. So, and they also, of course, increased the usage of the app among the ones who have downloaded it with sending push notifications. There is a new game, come on and play, play and win, come pick up the price from the store. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show you a short video about Coop that they have made themselves about their app. So this is a little bit wider than just gamification, but there is a significant part of gamification, so let's watch it. We all eat out more, buy more fast food, and 50% of us say no thank you to flyers. Retail shops are feeling the effect of this. That's why we launched the Co-op app, which makes daily shopping easier and offers cash rewards, food inspiration and personalized offers with discounts on your favorite items. Everything brought together in one place and all to strengthen the relationships and provide access to the 1.8 million members of Co-op. For example, you can make a shopping list in the app that cleverly guides you through the store so you don't have to go back and forth. You can also pay with the app or use mobile pay and save your receipts digitally. And with the new Scan and Pay, you can scan your purchases yourself and skip the queue. And that's not all. The app has already been downloaded 1.1 million times, providing Co-op with a digital hook on its members, making it easier to push new app features, activate inactive members, and increase customer flow and sales in Co-op stores. To focus attention on the app and create an even greater stream of customers, we introduced a game function, which in December alone generated 95,000 downloads. 700,000 people played a total of 3.5 million times. Throughout 2018, it was played 10 million times and 1 million samples were picked up in stores. The app enabled us to give customers personalized offers adapted to the individual customer's purchasing behavior. By using targeted communication based on behavior in the app, the number of redeemed personal offers increased by 49% from 2017 to 2018. This resulted in 4.5 million personalized offers coming out of the stores in 2018. In addition, we increased the number of active users by educating them on several new features in the app, tailored to their needs. In 2018, 3.7 million app payments were made in-store. And on a good day, 250,000 people use the app and spend an average of four minutes on it. Overall, co-op app users are 16% more satisfied than members who do not use the app. The app gives shopping in co-op a whole new meaning. So, <clears throat> sorry, I forgot to mention Coop is, uh, if somebody doesn't know who is, what, what is Coop, it's uh, a grocery network cooperative model in Denmark and in other countries, one of the biggest operators in Denmark. So, uh, what happened with these games, I just saw one game going on on the mobile. It's from their Christmas campaign. You open the door, there is a Wheel of Fortune, and you can win a chocolate bar.
Sorry, no win this time. Okay, what happened? 75% of these samples of these prices won was picked up from the stores. 75%. So a chocolate bar or a pack of cookies is enough to drive you to the store. Okay. So what was the concept? Uh, first, they send a push notification to the app users. Then they present the game. Then you enter to the game, you play, in this case a Wheel of Fortune. Good luck, you won. And then you choose which store you want to pick up it from, and then you get the prize. And of course, when the, the Voyagers came into their app, they uh, used it while buying other groceries. So they get all the data from the users who has won something. So they know how, uh, how it's affected in the uh, visiting frequency and to the basket size. I'm going to show that to you in a minute. Uh, another example, Oreo game. For some reason, we have only games that ends up no winning, but uh, it's a scratch card. And these kind of games, they have twice a week in the app. They sell these to their uh, suppliers, like Oreo, which is playing 35,000 euros for the media to be in that one, and they pay the prices. They share 5,000 pack of cookies. But imagine this uh, if you want to do sampling. Instead of uh, bringing uh, sample dealers in, into the stores, you can get the samples if you want to try a new taste of your product or whatever, new package or whatever. You can uh, share the samples through this app for the people, and they will go to pick, up, pick them up themselves, and it's really fast. So what happened was, uh, before gamification, they had an app user that went to store. When they entered, uh, the, they uh, inserted the gamification function. Uh, on average, they won five prizes. Four of them were picked up from the stores. And it increased the frequency going to the store by 58% and the basket size by 33%. OK. Do the math. Wow. OK. So to sum it up, what happened during 2018, 10 million playthroughs in the games, 1 million visits to the stores, more than 300,000 app downloads, more than 4.5 million personalized offers, and 49% increase in redeeming personalized offers. So that's quite massive. So uh, the games can be divided in three different categories. The luck games, which we call the high converters. The usual uh, conversion rate in these high converting games is between 60 to 80 percent. So 60 to 80 percent from the people coming to landing page will uh, fill out the registration form and play. Then there is this brand, ext brand extenders, so uh, games where you have to play a little bit more. There's a lot of uh, game types where you can play with pictures, so if you have, for example, a new product and you want people to remember what it looks like, what it feels like, make them play with your product. Do a puzzle, do a memory game. And you can also teach people with the memory game. Combine product and the benefits of the product. We have a lot of examples of these too. And then uh, the content engagers, which is my personal favorite, since I am a uh, data-driven believer. So these are the kind of, kind of concepts where you can actually collect a lot of data from your users. Personality tests, quizzes. Christmas is coming. Christmas calendar, you have 24 data points to collect data from your audience. So that's a massive opportunity. And uh, then when you just uh, combine them with your own marketing automation or CRM, the data flows where you want, want it to flow. So these are really, really uh, uh, kind of a games that also uh, people play for a long time. The average time is two minutes playing one game when you're talking about content engagers. So imagine a two minutes time with your audience, with your brand. And to stop with just some simple numbers from our platform, uh, last year, 2018, 
million people played the game in over 3,000 campaigns in over uh, 190 countries around the world. Altogether, 24 million minutes of played games and 27 million playthroughs. So this year we're going to at least double that. I have eight seconds. Thank you.